2.4 is quadratic and absolute value inequalities. We're going to be solving uh, inequalities which have a greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to sign in them instead of a regular equal sign. So we're first going to start with f of x is greater than or equal to zero. We want to solve this. So what is f of x? f of x is the y values. If we have a graph of the function, all we have to do is figure out what parts of the graph have a y value that is greater than or equal to zero. So what I like to do is look at the bad parts. So I'm going to scribble out the parts I don't want. These are the two little valleys here. Those have negative y values. And I want everything else. So we're going to go uh, and shade in the parts that we want. So we want this part. I call these the horns. Right here, the two ends. We also want this point right here at uh, x equals 2. So how do we identify these values? Well, we want to talk about the x values, not the y values. Even though we're looking at when are the y values greater than or equal to 0, our answer is going to be intervals and sometimes just single x values. So what is our solution? Well, all the x's that are less than negative 1, so we're going to write this as negative infinity to negative 1, you always go open at infinity. Now, negative 1, is it okay to equal negative 1? Well, it's okay for y to equal 0, so we're going to include this point. Because it's okay to equal 0 in our example, we include this x value. Now, how do we just write 2 by itself? This is a little bit sloppy. I will know what you mean if you write that. Uh, but what we really want to do is wrap it up in a curly bracket. That's how we put single values uh, in there. What's the next interval? Well, we're going to start at 4 and go to infinity. Always open at infinity. It's okay to equal 4 because our y value is equal to 0 right there. So when x is 4, y is 0, and that's just fine. So this is the solution to f of x greater than or equal to 0. Now if we had a slightly different problem, if it was f of x is greater than 0, how would it change? The only thing that would happen is we would have to cut out these three x values. What would that look like? Our solution would be negative infinity, negative 1, we would skip negative 1, completely skip 2, and also skip 4. So our intervals would become open on both ends if we had only greater than 0. So these are all the x values with positive y values. If you have two functions, one function is greater than or equal to the next function, how do you solve it? A little bit of algebra. You get a new function and we'll call this h of x. This function, you can grab this function and figure out when is it above the x-axis. And that's how we're going to solve this. So we talked about greater than or equal to or just regular greater than. What if you got the opposite sign? Well, I'm going to subtract f of x to the other side You can always rotate inequalities around. Just make sure you flip the inequality sign. So this would be the graph of negative f of x. When is that greater than or equal to 0? Remember what a negative does. Negative is a vertical, reflex, uh, vertical reflection. Well, it's a stretch technically, but it's a stretch of negative 1. So it would be a vertical reflection. It would take the graph, flip it over. And we'll be solving inequalities graphically, maybe a, little, maybe a linear inequality algebraically, but when you get further than linear inequalities, they get very ugly uh, to do. You'll see if you work through some of the algebraic problems in 2.4, they're a little bit of a pain. And which ones am I referring to? Um, right here, 2.4.3. Uh, for example, number four is pretty bad at number, 
Number four is pretty bad. Number three is not too bad. Uh, so this number four, that would not be on a quiz or a midterm.